Okay, so we're dealing with f10-3 this time. So instead of basing it around the x-axis, instead of finding finding the moment of, moment of inertia for the shaded area, we're going to base it around on the y-axis this time. So same thing goes, we're going to construct our rectangle, except this time, let's change our perspective. It will be a different perspective this time, since we're changing our perspective on the axis. So now, let's figure out the lengths. So our lengths are going to be y and dx. Same notes this side. There we go. So now we have both of our sides we can then compute for its area. Which is just length multiplied by width y dx. There we go. Now, what are we solving for? We're solving for the moment of inertia for this entire shaded, uh, shaded region based upon our y-axis. So, instead of so, if you remember from the previous video, we've dealt with um, the moment of inertia based upon the x-axis. That's why our subscript here was i of x. Instead of that, we're going to be dealing with i of y. So that is our requirement. Okay. So what's the formula for our moment of inertia? It's simply, it's the same thing except we're going to be changing certain variables around to fit our new perspective. So x squared dA. All right. So now we have that. We do have dA. We do have dA to sub in. And then what about our limits? Our limits are the same. It's going to be x equals 0. It starts from 0. And what are its limits? How far is the shaded region? It's only equal 1. So x equals 0 and x equals 1. So those are our limits. So we have that as well. Okay? So now let's plug those values in. So i of y equals 1, 0. x squared will stay as it is. And then we have our dA. Our dA is simply y dx. The multiplication y dx. Now over here, we have this y. Which, which makes things a little bit more difficult. So let's find something that can that can eliminate this y, or maybe something that's equal to this, but in terms of x, so that we can solve it using basic integration afterwards. So we have a formula here, uh, a function for the curve, for the curve of the shaded region. We can use this in order to isolate our y's, in order for this. To become in terms of x. Okay, let's do that. So over here we have y cubed equals x squared. Alright, so we're solving for y. So basically we're just gonna multiply both sides by long fit the term by 1 over g. Our answer is going to be y equals x2 over 3. There we go. So now we have a y that we can plug in here, which is in terms of x. So let's do that. So equals x squared multiplied by x2 over 3 dx. Okay, so now it's looking very, very uniform. So now we can further simplify this, if you can see. Multiplication between between two terms of the same base, their exponents will only add. If you remember from the last video, but in any ways, I'll still take it step by step. Now we have our x squared multiplied by x 2 over 3. So basically... It's the same as if this was m and this is n, it will only equal to the sum of their exponents. Okay, so same thing applies. So we're gonna do that for for our two for our two and 
two thirds. There we go. So that's six. Six plus two, that's eight. So that is eight over three. So accordingly, this new our new uh, term is going to be x eight over three dx. Okay. So so let's try to clear it out. So there's much more space for us to. Uh, to work on. So now we'll solve this using basic integration. So for basic integration, if you remember, x n plus 1 over n plus 1. So in this case, it's going to be 8 over 3 plus 1. So what is that? And 8 over 3 plus 1 5 over 3, 9, 10, 11, so it's going to be 11 over 3, correct? And then it's going to be divided by 11 over 3 again. Let's put it in brackets. 11 over 3, all over 11 over 3. Right? But then we can write this similar to that. It's going to be 3 over 11 since it's a reciprocal, x 11 over 3. And then since anything that's multiplied by 0 for the succeeding term, we're going to negate that. So we should only take this this uh, first value, which is 1. So once we substitute 1 here, any base that is 1 multiplied to any exponent will always be 1. So you can practically cancel this out. It won't make a difference. So we're left with 3 over 11. So hence, 3 over 11 is going to be 0 0.272 and so on. So we can we can turn that into our scientific notation so that's much more easier to look at. 272 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meter to the power of 4. And that is our final answer.